Now let's talk about VHDL, which stands for Very High Speed Integrated Circuit Hardware Description Language. That's a mouthful. VHL is a hardware description language that first came about in 1983 and is used in electronic design automation to describe digital mixed signal systems such as field programmable gate arrays and integrated circuits. Our discussion here serves as an introduction is not a complete treatment. I suggest giving section 2.9 a close read. This is a 2-bit greater than comparator circuit that is used as an example for both VHDL and Verilog. Assuming that A and B are made up of 2 bits each, the circuit will tell us whether A is greater than B. We begin with the structural descriptions to replace the schematic. We'll then look at the data flow description that describes the circuit by function rather than structure, and we'll finish up with the behavioral description using concurrent assignments. We begin by looking at the structural description. And looking at VHDL, you'll notice the keywords are bold. It's also worth noting that VHDL is case insensitive, which is quite different from our old friend C++. Lines 1 and 2 are the comments, while lines 3 and 4 indicate the packages and libraries we'll be using in our program. You can find some more details about libraries and packages on page 88 of the text. Line 6 begins the declaration of an entity. The entity is the fundamental unit of VHDL. The entity describes the circuit from slide 2 and indicates the components. Lines 7 to 9 are report declarations which are used to define the inputs and outputs. While VHDL is case insensitive, it is strongly typed. In the case of output, we're using standard logic which has values of 0, 1, x for unknown, and u for uninitialized. For the inputs, we're using vectors. Next, we want to specify the function of the circuit. A particular representation of the function of an entity is called the architecture of the entity. This begins on line 12. Lines 15 to 29 declare the gate types that we're going to use. We need an inverter, a 2-input AND gate, a 3-input AND gate, and a 3-input OR gate as our components. These gate types are VHDL descriptions in the package function primps. Note the name and port declaration of a component must be identical to those of the underlying entity. Before specifying the interconnections between the gates, we need to name all the nets in the circuit. The internal nets are the outputs of the inverters and AND gates. These output nets are declared as signals on line 30. In VHDL, there are both signals and variables. Variables are evaluated instantaneously, while signals are evaluated at some future point in time. This book focuses on simulating circuits for correctness rather than time delay. After declaring the internal signals, the main body of the architecture starts with the keyword begin. Here, a port map maps the input and output of each component to the signals to which they are connected. For example, in line 32, input 1 is B0 and the output is signal B0 sub n. Lines 33 to 37 give the remaining gates. The architecture is completed with the keyword end followed by its name, in this case structural. A data flow description describes the circuit in terms of function rather than structure, and is made up of concurrent assignment statements or their equivalent. Whenever a change in value occurs on the right-hand side of a Boolean equation, the left-hand side is evaluated. Here we can see that the library use and entity portions are the same as for the structural description we discussed in a couple slides back. The data flow descriptions begin on line 15. For example, we can see that the signals B0 sub n and B1 sub n are defined by signal assignments that apply the operation not to the inputs B0 and B1. The data flow description is much simpler than the structural model. It should also be noted that the order of execution of assignment statements does not depend on their order of appearance, but rather on the order of changes of signals. Data flow models using concurrent assignments are considered to be behavioral descriptions. In this example, instead of using Boolean equations, we can use a when else statement as a behavioral model. This describes the behavior of the circuit. That is, the output is 1 when A is greater than B, and 0 otherwise. Whenever A or B changes, the when condition is reevaluated, and the output gets assigned appropriate. With select is a variation on when else. We can use with select when a set of conditions is used to select between several different functions. With select often results in simpler logical structures because it only depends on a single condition, and when else depends on multiple conditions. Finally, we have our test benches. A test bench is an HDL model whose purpose is to test another model, which is often called the device under test, or DUT. This is done by applying stimuli to the inputs. More complex test benches will also analyze the output of the device under test for correctness. 
The process portion, lines 19 through 30, is used to test the device. Thanks as always for watching. You don't need to like, share, or subscribe, but make sure to complete your assignments. And also take a good look at the code in section 2.9 of the book, because it'll have a lot more details and you can examine it much more thoroughly than you can in the short presentation.